against the system is that they've been interpolated, they've been indoctrinated to reproduce the ideas by which they are oppressed. It's as though the rapist, the, 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 Hegel has this uh, concept called the master-slave dialectic. The, ma the, the slave views himself through the eyes of the master. If I view myself through the eyes of my master, can I ever revolt against my master? What was so shocking during the Haitian Revolution, white people could not believe that their slave, who they cared for, could revolt against them and kill them. Because they thought, because I identified so much, because the slave identified so much with the master, that they could revolt, they would, they would never revolt because my slave loves me. You ever read uh, Toni Morrison's The Bluest Eyes? Oh, yeah. You people don't read? Seriously? It reads that you got. Beautiful. Toni Morrison has this beautiful uh, book that opens up with a slave, an, uh, uh, an enslaved African killing her child to prevent them from being enslaved. Now, and it begs the question, which is, the slave master was saying she was immoral for killing the slave, but in her mind she was more moral than the slave master. Why would I have my child reproduce this condition? So infanticide was a, a form of libera liberation, right? But the slave cannot, the, the master cannot conceive of that because of the ideology by which he recursively reorganizes society. So once you share into the ideas of the society, you don't want to revolt and get rid of society. You want to reproduce it. I want to have as much money so I can fly around the world. I'm poor as dirt, but I'm not thinking about revolting and stealing from the wealth well to do. No. I want to know how can I get enough money to live like Kanye, LeBron, all these well to do people so I can go wherever I want to. So the poor, that's why Appalachian whites, poor Appalachian whites, are more, more likely to side with Republicans than quote unquote Democrats, even though same party, they're the same party, two sides of the same coin. They represent the 1%, right? Yes, of course. You all know that, right? Yes. Yeah. But we don't think that because we caught up into, we believe we have free will and we're caught up into the idea. So ideology is actually a dangerous thing. Does that answer your question? Yeah, but like, I feel like most of your theories are like really generalized. Like, like what if there's some people that like, you know, start something different, think differently. Like, because like the way that you're making it seem is, it seems like we're doomed. Like, because <laughs> everybody's we're thinking continuous. the same. But like, there could also be other people that are thinking differently. You know, and maybe they can make a change. It's called that. What you're arguing is called the the structure agency problematic in sociology. The what? Structure. <laughs> structure agency. So on the one hand, the structure is determining everything, right? But how do you account for free will? How do you account for those people who say, you know what? We're not doomed. Right. We can have alternative. Where the difference? Yes. How do you account for difference? That's the problem that we have as sociology. That's why I turn to the structurationist school. It gets theoretically technical. I'm not going to get into it. But yes, there are marginalized groups who are fighting against. You, uh, we have groups who are fighting against global capitalism, who are protesting against capitalism. It, the problem is they're marginalizing. Have you ever heard of Noam Chomsky? Yes. Chomsky is fighting against this. Chomsky, my idol, by the way. Cornell West. Oh, same love thing. Dr. Cornell West. Same thing. They're fighting against I protest against this. So the problem is to find marginalized groups who are on the fringes of the structure. And they are marginalized, believe it or not, they are. You never see Chomsky on mainstream media, do you? Of course not. What do you think? Go ahead. What do you think could change this? Like, uh, if this could change, like, to change up the structuralism, what do you think would it be? Would edu education at an earlier age maybe, so people don't think that way, like ghosts, kind of? <laughs> I argue we're doomed. I wrote a book called Liberal Bourgeois Protestantism. I argue we're doomed. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh do you think we're past? We're beyond I mean, the point of no return? Yeah. At an early age, can like maybe upstart some like different. I think, it, it's not only I think it's not only education, it's just what you see on the media and the perception that it's kind of like implemented for other people. Who, who, who so how do we change it? Yeah. 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 Ye
change. I feel it's but consumerism. The media, we allow it to happen. I know right? the media comes off of a bus, so if we don't change, nothing is going to get yeah. changed. That's why I'm saying us if as the consumer. If we don't make a difference, there's the, nothing that's going to be shown. The problem I argue is that um, the only last, what we call that counter hegemonic. You all want me to write that down? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It's called counter hegemonic ideas. I argue the earth is the last remaining counter hegemonic force. Mother nature will force us to change. And she is forcing us to change. She doesn't discriminate. No. So certain ideas are, are problematic. Economic growth, we can't. There's a limit to grow. What happens when we use up all the oil and all the resources? You die, dummy. We're polluting the environment. You know, if we go up, if the climate change, overall climate, if we go up two degrees, we all die. So Mother Nature, I argue, is the only counter-hegemonic force. The capitalist response, trying to integrate marginalized groups based on their gender, race, sex, etc., into the capitalist social structure is problematic because if you're just trying to get... They're just checking the box. Yes, you're just trying to get more wealthy women, gays, blacks, into capitalism. How does that change the system by which we organize our society? We have to change the system by which we organize society. If we don't, we die. That's the bottom line. It, it, I know that sounds zero-sum game, but it is a zero-sum game. And that's why you all need to be in the streets. I'm not telling you not to come to class. <laughs> you need to be protesting. After this class, you do it. <laughs> I have a saying, the masses vote, but the elites bribe your politician. I, I don't know what this word means. What is the bourgeois society? Like, it, yeah, it, it, well, it's, it's, those are the two classes that Marx uh, argue constitute capitalist society. The bourgeoisie, they're the group of people who own what he calls the means of production. The, the means of production are the, the tools you need to labor. Well, the bourgeoisie or the elites, they own the means by which you need to survive work, blah, blah, blah. And the proletariat, the only thing that you have to sell to the bourgeoisie is what? Your, your labor. labor. Your labor power. So you have the forces of production and they have, and they control the social relations of produ production, the structure of society. They say you have to work. If you don't eat, if you don't work, you don't eat, you die. So you have to sell your labor power. And let me see how if, you all if, I could help, if I could help Sorry. a little bit, what do we talk about? How, how does an individual gain power? What, what are the different ways Education. that someone has power? Education, Education what else? Economic. Economic. Money, Economic. what else? Uh, with geography, where they're at. Land, remember? All right. So think of the bourgeoisie that way. Who's got the power and how did they, how did they accumulate that power? What do they have in order to have that power? And what we have usually as a proletariat, the workers, is our, time, our labor, right. our time, our brains. And that's what we're selling, really, because it's a barter system, right? <laughs> well, yeah. And, and, and they're, they're buying at cheaper have. prices. Because I, I agree, and I guess I, I, I find it fascinating that, yeah, stratification, no matter what the train of thought is, it's necessary. Mm -hmm. But I think it's definitely skewed, and I feel mm -hmm. like... We have other counter hegemonics besides the earth. It's the consumer. Mm -hmm. Because like people like Kanye West and like LeBron James and all these people, they make money because us as the consumer allow them to be justified to make that money. I promise you, if you for an entire year nobody went to a heat game, they'd probably be in the Miami Heat or they get paid a significantly less amount. But that requires that the Yeah, so people as a whole yeah, and that's not gonna happen. I get it. Right. And your question is back off her question because technically the proletariat has power because the factories yeah, we'll won't work <laughs> if you don't sell your labor. So in the early, at the turn of the 20th century, you know, we had labor unions, yeah. but by the mid 20th century, under Reaganomics, they got rid of the unions. So unionization was a form of getting power to the proletariat class. But then the elites used race to 
divide uh, uh, the proletariat class. So they would use blacks to break strikes. For example, Boston was known for that. They would use blacks to break strike, strikes, and that would lead to conflict between white working class versus the uh, uh, black working class. Why? Because they would do it for cheaper? Yes. Yes. Remember, during the Great Migration, blacks leave the agricultural south and come to the urban centers looking for industrial work. Because the Civil War was actually a class warfare, industrial north versus the agricultural yeah. south. Mm -hmm. So you have to look at it that way. So it's technically, yes, the masses have the power, but the consciousness of the masses is skewed by the ideology. By ideology. That are set by the people in power. Right, because we want to be like Mike. Well, it's the definition of insanity. We keep doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result, and we're not going to get it. Yes. Yes. Do you think we're here for a reason? Do I think we're here for a reason? No. Yeah, like, is there like a... No. I'm no? Not, you really don't think so? Like, we're just here just to chill? We're not to that. chill, but just well, to... Well, just to chill, but like, you know, it's worth and then die. Like, that's it? Like, there's yeah. no enlightenment? Yeah. Like, no. It's, it's a, it's a non-question. <laughs> that's a non-question. That's what a different class. Well, no, because you were kind of talking about it at the beginning. Yeah, like, what? As a philosopher? Yeah, you were kind of I'm like, a materialist, so I don't believe there's any purpose behind what like we us do. being here now. Yeah. Alright, don't go don't go down that, that rabbit hole. <laughs> We're we'll here all day. <laughs> yeah, like, I got let's, things to do after this lesson. Yeah, let's stick let's stick to the, the discussion right here. versus the side epistemologist. What we call ideology is it that the mind imposes the ideas that we are calling good, bad, blah, 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 whatever. Or when you are conceiving of something, are you looking at something as it is the nature in and of itself? Is there a truth? Basically, bottom line, is there a truth with a capital T or is it a truth with a small t? I am what we call a um, psi ontologist. I do believe there is a truth with a capital T in that, yes, we can conceive and ascertain that truth. Some people don't. Some people believe that truth is relative to space and time. I'm not one of those. I'm, I, I am a psi ontologist. I believe that we can ascertain the nature of reality as such. But truth doesn't tell me how I should recursively reorganize and reproduce my, my life. Science cannot tell me, allegedly, that's the West. The West believes that science, okay, just because I know that we live in a multiverse, does that tell me how I should live? I mean, but you're talking about like physical sciences, but what about social sciences? Like, Same thing. I'm talking about how to be like people. You know? Same like, thing. What if, like, what if like you knew that like, on, on what know, fundamental like, basis? People are worse. Okay, and, let's like, go they're, back they're to just, this. Like you're putting other people down. Like what if like, we say all society straps by, right? Yeah. yeah. So on what theoretical basis can you can you organize a non-stratifying society? Well, what if you just made the stratification off like something scientific? I was like more like yeah, yeah, exactly. more, like, like merit, uh, like physical abilities, 
I don't know, like, we, mm. well, yeah, physical ability can change. The structural functionalists argue. So does that mean well, it's not like people with disability can't work? I mean, if you're in a complex society, like, it's, that, isn't that how it is? Kind of like, Let me ask you that. Well, we're both there, so it's not on the I hear what you're saying. So should the ultimate aim of the social sciences be to give those in power a non-discriminatory form of organizing society. Is that what you're saying? I mean, or just with discrimination. Like, I mean, discrimination is kind of like you're saying some people are worse than others. And I mean, it's like, not necessarily. We all discriminate. Yeah, exactly. So I think, like, if that's going to happen either way, why don't we make it more of something that, like, you know, if you're a bad person for the time being, it's not like, I don't think it has to be bad. The thing can be more bad. It's like a way that you can get out of it. Like, if you're maybe in a bad place in life, I don't think you should have as much power as if you know, you're in a good place and you think everybody should have equal power. So what determines whether or not you're in a good or a bad place? place? Read Plato's Republic, okay? <laughs> you ever read Plato's Republic? Because that's the argument he's making. He's trying to, it's a book. You guys don't read? No. <laughs> Seriously? I'm sure you <laughs> that, to answer your question, that, that's what Plato is trying to argue. He's, he's anti-capitalist because he's arguing that capitalism leads to mediocrity. Because it cuts everyone down to size. Great two books. Alexis de Tercqueville, Democracy in America, Plato's Republic. Because all of these ideas, we came up with them. God didn't give us these ideas. We conceived of them. Emil Durkheim is writing at a time of war in, in European society. And he's trying to fix. I see you, you have the passion. You want to fix society, right? I get it. But the problem is, it's theorizing on how do we fix this? How do we, what is, what is Dr. McComb's alternative to bourgeois capitalist society? I do have a concept, but that's my concept. I'm not going to impose my concept on you. I call it libertarian communism, state libertarian communism. Chomsky calls his, Chomsky is an anarchist. I don't know people tell me what to do. I mean, so, I think, I think political party can work out. I just think you just gotta be a good person. Like, if, if you're but what justifies a good person, person that's objective? No, I think, I, I think like, you know, if you kill someone, but some people that might not be a bad okay, thing. Yeah, it's yeah, very, it's really extreme, but yeah. I want to defend myself. Yeah, don't defend you. See, we're getting to Read, okay, yeah, read Emmanuel Kant, Critique of Pure Reason. Okay. Read. Oh, thank you. You, 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 you're thinking. 